Welcome to my channel Combat Vehicle. Attacks from the Russian army do not stop. This time, Soldier, Donsk region, became the affected city. The armed forces of the Russian Federation once already made an unsuccessful assault on it, but now. Having reorganized, they entered the battle with new... According to the Deputy Minister of Defense Anna Maliar, the enemy used the defeat, and as a result, the retreat during the assault on Soldier for competent tactical rebuilding, replenishment of combat supplies, changes in tactics, and ultimately, a new assault on the city. The emphasis in planning a new offensive was placed on increasing the number of assault groups. These groups, in turn, were formed from the best reserves of the Wagnerites. The enemy, as if nothing had happened, is advancing in the wake of old battles, not having time to drag the victims away, does not skimp on artillery, mortar salvos, sometimes without even understanding the ultimate goal of the shot. The painter convinces that with his own eyes he sees the valor and courage of Ukrainian fighters who fearlessly go into battle and defend their lands. This whole situation was preceded by a statement by the commander of the ground forces, Colonel General Alexander Siski on January 9 that false information about the capture of Soldier was propagated in the Russian news because in fact the enemy suffered significant losses and retreated. The most hot spots on the battlefield are now near the cities of the Donsk region Soldier and Bakhmut, but this does not mean that everything is completely calm in other cities. For example, in the city of Oshikov, about 10 people were injured after a ruthless shelling. The dissidents of this, the enemy fired at the city of Oshikov, Mykolaiv region, at least eight people were injured. According to the head of the Nikolaiv Regional Military Administration, Vitaly Kim, and the head of the Nikolaiv Regional Council, Anna Zamezeva, the Russian invaders fired not just at home, they purposefully and ruthlessly fired at the hospital and other vital civilian infrastructure buildings. During the shelling from broken windows and doors on the territory of the hospital, there were no data on the victims. But a little later, information appeared about eight wounded, three of whom needed urgent transportation for further treatment to Nikolaev. In addition, information about the victims does not stop coming. It became known about that during the shelling a two-year-old child was wounded and a total of ten people were injured. After such news, it becomes clear that Ukraine alone cannot cope that it needs financial, medical, military, and humanitarian assistance. And many Western countries are responding to the difficult situation for Ukraine. So, in the UK, there is now a question about the possible supply of Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine. The outweighing of forces on the side of the Russian army does not leave indifferent the democratic world of the West. In this regard, in the UK for the first time they thought about sending their tanks to help Ukraine. According to the Sky News Channel, citing European private sources, a Western source familiar with the negotiations said that for several weeks there have been discussions about the supply of a certain number of the British Army's Challenger 2 main battle tank to the armed forces of Ukraine. Such a decision would mean an even more loyal attitude of the West towards Ukraine and a readiness to help it in an unprecedented way. Such a bold step by Great Britain would encourage other democratic countries' members of the alliance to follow it and send help to the front. One source suggested that the UK could offer around 10 Challenger 2 tanks. The source clarified that such a decisive step would only overcome the barrier, according to which the West was afraid to supply such significant military equipment in connection with the possible perception of this by Russia as an excessive escalation. The supply of tanks will not mean Britain's entry into the war as an ally. Rishi Sunak's government has not yet made a final decision, but if Britain agrees to such a supply, it will be the first country to respond to the request of Ukrainian leaders to equip their army with powerful Western tanks. The British Ministry of Defense neither confirms nor denies that the British government is considering supplying tanks to Ukraine. According to the Speaker of the British Ministry of Defense, since the beginning of the war, the country has actively taken a role in helping Ukraine morally, humanitarianly, financially, and with the supply of military equipment. And now it is ready to be the first to take such a decisive step. Last year, the UK sent 14 Challenger 2 tanks to Poland as part of an agreement to help Ukraine freeing up capacity for Warsaw, which was able to transfer its Soviet T-72 tanks to Kiev. The Challenger 2 tank has been in service with the British Army since 1994. It weighs 62.5 tons and is armed with a 120mm rifled gun and a 7.62mm chain gun. Now a group of Challenger tanks is in Estonia as part of the NATO mission in Eastern Europe to deter Russian aggression. Previously Challenger 2 was used in Bosnia and during the war in Iraq in 2003. Americans have always amazed me. Some of them are smart. In general, the smart population is the same as ours. There are fewer percentages in the state leadership than in Russia, but still quite a lot. 
These smart people are generally correct and absolutely correct in their assessment of the situation. Most likely they take the prefix to their former position, but positively. Some even dare to do so before leaving formal politics. Later, I assess the situation and development quite correctly, which is much more difficult than a static assessment, and somehow leads to conclusions that completely contradict my own assessment. Recently, two former U.S. officials, George W. Bush's National Security Advisor Condoleezza, a former Secretary of State in his Rice administration, and a former Secretary of Defense under Bush Jr. Robert Gates wrote for the Washington Post as director of the Central Intelligence Agency. Since 2005, it was said that, in their opinion, Putin could not see to Ukraine the four regions in the southeastern region that he returned to Russia, as this would be a defeat for him. It is immediately clear that they did not mention Crimea and Sevastopol at all, and apparently not because they are waiting for their return to Ukraine. I do not even consider it necessary to list. These two of his high-ranking and influential Republicans actually recognize Crimea and Sevastopol as part of Russia. At the same time, Rice and Gates are far from Trumpists. They belong to a galaxy of neoconservative Republicans who, contrary to the opinion of Bush SR, were not interested in integrating Russia into the Western structure as a junior partner after the collapse of the SSR, and continued the policy. There is Russia, which has led the United States to its current sorry state, for which both Democrats and Republicans are to blame, is under fire in Eastern Europe because of decades of bipartisan consensus in Washington about the need to contain Russia. Cordon sanitation the border alienates her and turns her into a disenfranchised servant. The United States in Washington. So, two very intelligent and influential American politicians declared by default that Crimea and Sevastopol left Ukraine forever, and four more regions, Kherson, Zaporozhye, Donetsk, Lugansk loudly declare that there is no realistic scenario for their return to Ukraine. They directly wrote that Putin cannot give, thereby making judgments about the publicly declared goals of the U.S. campaign in Ukraine. After all, everyone understands that not only Putin cannot give, but the United States cannot take. From the moment these territories were declared an integral part of Russia, Moscow would have to suffer a military defeat in order to capture them. Is possible only in a situation of the collapse of the Russian state. And the Russian military doctrine assumes the possibility of delivering a preventive nuclear strike in case of danger to the Russian state. Even Russia cannot be defeated. The maximum that the strongest enemy can count on is a nuclear missile prank that modifies the death of the current civilization. 